When tanks first arrived on the battlefield in World War I, they were huge, lumbering, slow-moving machine gun platforms. By World War II, tanks had evolved into highly mobile, highly armored gun platforms. Men like Creighton Abrams and George Patton became icons for the U.S. Army Tank Corps as they blazed across Europe. But the British had a few tank heroes of their own, and a few also became legends. Who was Joseph Eakins? What made him a standout in the British Royal Army Armored Corps? How did he manage to be so successful and also survive his many encounters? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Joseph William Egans was born on 15 July 1923 in Kettering, Northamptonshire, England. He joined the British Army and volunteered for the Tank Corps. Egans' tank was a Sherman Firefly, which was widely used by the United Kingdom and some armored formations of other allies during the war. It was based upon the mass-produced American M4 Sherman, which mounted the 75mm cannon. The nickname Firefly was adopted due to the bright muzzle flash of the main gun. Like all Sherman variants, it carried a crew of four, the commander, gunner, loader, who was also the radio operator, and the driver. But the Firefly version, of which around 2,200 were built out of 49,234 Shermans in total, was redesigned specifically for British use. This version was fitted with the more powerful 3-inch, or 76.2 millimeter caliber, which the British called the 17-pounder anti-tank gun as its main weapon. It had longer range, a longer gun barrel, and could penetrate the flank armor of any German tank, including Panthers and Tigers, whereas the American 75 millimeter cannon was problematic, and only a hit in the rear engine compartment could guarantee a kill. Eakins gained national recognition as a deadly tank gunner, especially in France, in which he destroyed four tanks in a day, including three Tiger Ones, one of which was commanded by the Black Baron himself, SS Captain Michael Wittmann. Allied tankers feared encountering the Panther or Tiger unless they had superior numbers. In fact, when engaging Tigers, the standing operation procedure was to use no less than three and preferably four Shermans while engaging a single Tiger. The 4 to 1 odds made sense, as it was expected that three Shermans would be lost to kill one Tiger due to the heavy frontal armor and the deadly 88mm cannon that could outrange and penetrate enemy armor more effectively. The British and Canadians were well aware that Wittmann had already personally destroyed 14 of their tanks, 15 personnel carriers and two anti-tank guns within 15 minutes for the loss of his own tank on 13 June 1944. That news was disseminated by Nazi propaganda, which the British knew all about, and this added to Wittmann's reputation, as he now had 130 tank kills, some say 135, and the Knights crossed with oak leaves and swords. What soon developed was a duel between the two deadliest tanks on the Western Front. This event occurred during the British and Canadian Operation Totalize, when his unit, the 1st Northamptonshire Yeomanry and elements of the 51st Highland Infantry Division, reached the French village of saint anne de Cremsil during the early morning of 8 August 1944. While B squadrons stayed around the village on watch, A and C squadrons moved further into Del Del Roche Wood. German tanks had been seen by aerial reconnaissance and reported by infantry. All the Shermans were ordered to wait. From their positions, they overlooked a large open section of ground and were able to watch if any German tanks advanced up Route Nationale 158 from the town of Sinto. Eakins, the gunner of Sergeant Gordon's Sherman Firefly, had yet to fire his new gun in action. In fact, most of the four-man crew were new to combat. They watched and waited. Under orders from Sepp Dietrich, Wittmann led his group of seven Tigers from Heavy SS Battalion 101 attached to the 1st Waffen SS Panzer Division, supported by additional tanks and infantry. The Tigers left the cover of a hedge near Sintho at 12.30 hours in two prongs, one in the middle of the field, with the other, including Wittmann, moving slower on the right flank. 
The British 75mm armed tanks engaged the Lee Tiger, hitting it in the transmission, bogies or track, and it started going in circles, trying to withdraw. Vidman's group of Tigers crossed open terrain towards the high ground. They were rolling into an ambush set by Allied tanks on both flanks. On orders from the troop commander, they held their fire until the German tanks were well within killing range. When the Tiger tanks became less than 1,000 yards in range, the order was given to fire, which continued as the Tigers rolled to within 500 yards. What followed was an almost 12-minute battle that saw Eakins destroying three of the Tigers with deadly accuracy. Joe Eakins then fired and hit the second Tiger on the right side and knocked it out. As the crew escaped and brought out their wounded, they watched another Tiger north of them go up in flames. A short time later, the main German counterattack was made in the direction of C Squadron. A Squadron moved over to support them, and in the resulting combat, Eakins then destroyed a Panzer IV before his own tank was hit by a Tiger and set afire, forcing the crew to bail out. In 1985, in the issue of After the Battle magazine, Les Taylor, a wartime member of the 1st Northamptonshire Yeomanry, claimed that Eakins was responsible for the destruction of Whitman's tank. Veteran and historian Ken Tout, a member of the same unit, also published a similar account crediting Eakins. Historians have supported this position, and it is widely accepted to be the true version of events. According to Hart, Eakins's unit was positioned in a wood on the right flank of the advancing Tiger tanks. At approximately 1247, they engaged them, halting the attack and killing Wittmann. After the battle, Eakins was reassigned to another tank within the squadron as a radio operator and remained in this position for the rest of the war. In 1985, British survivors Rad Walters, Joe Eakins, and Ken Tout gave their collections and reminiscences and compared those to the German accounts and pieced the final battle together. There is no doubt that Eakins' four kills included Michael Wittmann. After the war, Eakins returned to Rushton, Northamptonshire, and went back home, married and had two children. He took a job in the shoe factories near his home, becoming a manager in one of the hometown factories. He retired 34 years later. Eakins died on 1 February 2012 at the age of 88, a real hero, and not even known to his neighbors and even some of his closest friends. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas. And we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.